Hello everyone. Uh, continuing with our discussions on the intermediate code generation. In this lecture, we will discuss about the back patching. Back patching is actually about uh, writing the three address scores for the conditional statements and the loops, switch case statements. And uh, back patching, as the name suggests, that we'll be doing some kind of the back patching for writing the labels. For example, if we have the uh, statement of the type if a is less than b then t is equals to 1 else t is equals to 0 so uh, we will have to convert this to the three address codes we have already discussed about the various kind of the three address uh, uh, there were seven exactly and if you remember those these were x is equals to y operation z where is the uh, op is the binary operation x is equals to op z where op is the unary operation x equals to y which is the assignment statements if x relational operator y go to l this is the conditional jump and go to l this is the unconditional jump then there is the array statements where ai is equals to x y is equals to ai pointer statements x equals to star p and y equals to address of p so we'll be using all uh, all these just to, to write the uh, three address codes for the if statements so we will be more concerned about this kind of the statement if x relational operator y go to l this is the conditional jump and go to l which is the unconditional jump so if the statement of the kind is written if uh, a is less than b then t equals to 1 else t is equals to 0 so just to write the uh, <clears throat> three address codes for this First, let's write if a relational operator b go to some level. We are not uh, defining at which level we have to go. Why? Right? Let's say this level is 100. And then we have to write this else part which is t is equals to 0 here. So this is the way we have to write it. Fine. Let's say at 100 level, we're writing go to this is the unconditional jump. And then at 103, let's write t is equals to 1. And this is the last statement. Fine. We have not written anything here. It is just that we have to, we have to come out of the if and the else from here. So these are the five statements uh, we have written. And in this five statement, the first one that we have written is the conditional jump. So conditional jump says that if a is less than b, the, the condition is true, then we have to go to some level. Okay. And then this 102 is showing that go to some level, but the level is not defined here and level is not defined here. So we have left it blank. And just uh, after finding out what is the actual level we should be shifting to, we will be writing those levels here. So now as you see, if the condition is true, t has to be 1. And where have we have written t equals to 1? It is here. After we have made t is equals to 1, we have to come out of this if, if construct. Fine. So that's why we have written t, t equals to 1 here. And immediately after this statement, you will switch to this 104. Okay. So if the condition is true, you have to go to uh, 103 just to make t equals to 1 and then come out of this if construct. Okay. Now let's say if this condition is not true, so you will not go to 103. So you will go to 101 statement. If the condition is not true, you are going coming to this statement. So t is equals to 0. If the condition is not true, you have to make t is equals to 0. So after making t is equals to 0, you again have to come out of this, this construct, the if construct or the conditional construct. So after t equals to 0, 0, you have to come to 104. So you will write 104 here. So this is the back patching. So in the back patching, what we are writing? We are either writing the conditional jump or the unconditional jump statements, but uh, we are not writing the label. We'll be writing the label later when we will, we will correctly find out where we should actually switch. Okay. So this 103 and uh, uh, 104 have been set as a back patching. Fine. So let's take more examples uh, just to understand this. Let's say we have a statement a is less than b and 
c is less than d or e is less than f so this actually is the combination of all these things that we have actually studied here let's say the value evaluated by a less than b is t1 value evaluated by c less than d is t2 and value evaluated by e less than f is t3 okay so just like what we have written here we have to write this here also so if this value if this a is less than b is true that means t1 should be set as 1 if this a is less than b is false t1 should be evaluated as 0 so let's first write this for a less than b so for this a less than b let's say we are starting from 100 and uh, we are writing if a is less than b and go to this is the conditional sum but we are leaving it blank so after this if you see just see how we have written here we are writing for the false one first so t1 is equals to 0 this is 101 and then we are writing the unconditional jump to the last statement fine so what would be the unconditional jump we are not writing it here okay if a is less than b is true then we are setting up t1 is equals to 1 and after t1 has been set to 1 you have to come out of this okay so you will have to come to 104 so obviously you will come to 104 here now if a is less than b you have to come to 103 just to make t1 is equals to 1 if this statement is false you are automatically coming to 101 and then you will come to when you will come out of this if construct and you will come to 104 so this back patching is done for this one similarly it will be done for c is less than d so c is less than d will start at 104 so if c is less than d then go to some statement we are leaving it blank we will write it later and then the false part means t2 is equals to 0 if c is not less than d t2 will be set as 0 in the next statement we are going to do the unconditional jump leave it leaving this as blank the label 107 t2 is set as 1 and then the 108 so if c is less than d we have to set t2 as 1 so we will have to move to 107 if this is not true we have to set t2 as 0 and then we have to come out of this so we will come up to 108 fine if c is less than d you have to go to 107 to set t2 is equals to 1 and then finally you have to come out of this if construct okay so this part has been written now we have to write for e is less than f so if e is less than f you have to go to some label for the false part you have to write t3 is equals to 0 and then the unconditional jump label is not defined here and you have to set the true part as t3 is equals to 1 and then 112 so if e is less than f you have to go to t3 is equals to 1 you have to set t3 is equals to 1 which is at 111 if this is not true automatically will come from 108 to 109 while setting t3 is equals to 0 and then going out of this if construct which is at 112 level. fine so up to now what we have done we have uh, actually set these statements for t1 t2 and t3 and then we have to uh, check the conditions we have to combine these two conditions for t1 t2 and t3 so and is applied in between t1 and t2 and entirely or is applied for t3 now if you see the there are two binary operations and and or here and and has higher precedence than the or so let's say at 112 uh, you're going to set t4 is equals to t1 and t2 having found this you will now find find the or between the t4 which is the and between t1 and t2 and t3 so let's say this is t5 and this t5 is equals to t4 or t3 so this is how the backpatching is done for the if constructs fine 
now let us do it for the while loops let's do the uh, back patching for the while loops so what is there in the while actually while loop is not present in the three address codes so you will have to convert that to the three address codes using these if statement fine so what is there in the while loop for example if there is a while loop while some statement or if some expression e is uh, true will be executing this statement s okay and when this statement is not true you will come out of this loop so we are just trying the uh, flow chart for this let's say this is the conditional set so if this condition is true you have to execute an statement s and after executing this statement you again have to go to the condition e and check the condition so if the condition is true again you will again execute the statement s but if the statement is not true you have to come out of this loop okay so just as we have uh, checked it for the if statements let's uh, do it to do it for the uh, loops also there may be two three two two or more ways for this so let's say this level is l and you are going to check the condition here if the condition is true okay so if you remember that what how the true is evaluated anything other than the zero is a true okay anything evaluated as uh, zero is false and anything evaluated other than zero is the true one so that's why we are writing only e here we are not writing e is one or zero or anything like that if e it means if uh, e is a positive value then we will go to some level okay and if the, if e statement is not true you are going to you are going to exit the loop so for exiting the loop we will write some level here fine now if this statement is not true if this uh, sorry if this statement is true the e statement is true you will go to execute the statement s fine you are going to execute the statement s so let's say this level is l1 after executing the statement s you will again have to go to this l level and check the conditions because this condition will be checked repeatedly until the condition is true so you will go to some level obviously l level and you will check the condition again now if this condition is not true you will have to come out of this loop and let's say this is the last level where you actually have to switch to if this condition is not true so now let us set the levels if the condition is true you have to go to if the condition is true you have to go to l1 and execute the statements and if the condition is not true you have to go to last because your last is actually denoting that uh, this is the exit in exiting from the loop we are exiting from the loop let's take one more example for understanding making an understanding of this while loops so let's say while a is less than b do what you are going to do x equals to y plus z so same same as what we have done here we will be writing this uh, st these statements here in the three address code we have to check the condition first so if a is less than b we have to go to some level to execute the statement the statements are x equals to y plus z and if this condition is not true then you will go to the last level let's say this is the l uh, some let's say l1 level after if, if the condition is true you have to execute these statements x equals to y plus z so how will this be, this be executed it will be in two steps so let's say t1 is equals to y plus z and then x equals to t1 so after this uh, 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 this x equals to y plus z has been set or x equals to y plus z has been executed you will again go to the condition check and will check the condition again so you will write some go to that is the unconditional jump here okay and finally this is the last level now 
if a is less than b you have to go to some level l2 and if a is not less than b you have to go to last because the condition is false okay and if after executing all these statements you have to come again to check the condition that is l1 fine so this is how we execute the for loop or how we write the three address codes for the while loop thank you